Hello everyone and welcome to a new Mega Drive Symphony of the Night Developers Diary. Things have been super busy these past few weeks due to work as well as the usual summer social stuff going on. So I haven't had quite as much time to code as I would like but I have been doing some work on the project, specifically this Alchemy Lab boss fight and even though it's not finished I thought now is the time to show you what I've been doing and uh, I think we have enough here to make it interesting so let's take a look. And what better place to start than to examine the PlayStation original? As most of you will no doubt know, the two bosses here, Guyburn and Stogra, they appeared in Super Castlevania 4 before this, but separately. So I think to up the ante for the, this 32-bit game, Konami decided to include them together. Now here, of course, I'm not playing the game normally. I, what I want to do is to examine the AI of both bosses. And it's, it's quite funny when you examine it like this of how close you can get before they react. Uh, they're just like flying and he's kind of uh, uh, staring at you, but he's not doing much. So finally move a bit closer and they get started. And to begin with this uh, drop attack, I, I wouldn't say it's broken, but obviously it's a bit easy. The The aim of, of Guyburn is a little off. If you just stand there, he misses you completely and lands to your left or to your right. So. This part here, if you get the timing right, which isn't very difficult, it's actually pretty easy to defeat poor uh, Slogra. He's been really let down by his partner in crime, I think, here, because he makes him very easy to kill. He's not really doing me any favours. <laughs> so uh, this part here, I thought, uh, it actually got off to a bit stupid start. But as soon as you lose the rhythm, as I did just there, and it, you get broken, then that's when you can be in a bit of trouble. Now usually if this happens you can of course fall back on your shield which can block all the projectile attacks but since I don't have a shield in my game I thought for this uh, test I won't use it here either because it will just make it too easy. I want it to, to see how it could possibly play in my Mega Drive version. Things are starting to get a bit more difficult here now that Guyburn's actually using these projectiles but uh, he's about to go back to the uh, pretty useless drop attack which as I, said, as I said is very easy to avoid especially now that poor a slogger has lost his spear even so he hasn't really got many avenues to attack and there he goes he dies pretty quickly i think most people when they play the game they they get rid of poor uh, a slogger first i don't think his bro guyban did him much favors he was more of a hindrance than a help and uh, without the shield the projectile is actually quite tricky if you've got the shield it's pretty easy but especially when he does this uh, attack on the floor it's pretty easy just to duck and to take him out that way and as you can see he goes down pretty quickly and just as an aside, this sound effect and this dropping of the life up is so iconic, I want to include it somehow, but I think it might be a bit difficult on the Mega Drive. Of course, playing through the boss fight once wasn't enough, and I've I've played this more times than I than I want to recount here, but I just show you how I've just looked and examined the AI in different ways. And so this time, instead of trying to just defeat it in the normal way as you would in a, a regular playthrough of Symphony of the Night, this time I've tried to drag the enemies a bit further to the left to see if it gets a if i can make it a bit more difficult on myself so if i try to attack him here then he just gets uh, i think he gets a bit impatient he just drops him to the right there but when they split up like this when they're not in that initial rhythm is actually quite difficult especially when they get either side of you what is an easy boss fight can become a bit more difficult and i think i would even though it's only going to be the second uh, boss fight of my game i think i would like to up the difficulty a little bit because in the original especially if you get into a rhythm straight away it can be quite easy we're here without now that i've disrupted the rhythm and i'm not using the shield it's definitely a lot more difficult and i think it's it's more fun that way too but uh, another funny thing i wouldn't call it a bug but more of a feature i suppose but if i've tried to like hide from the attack here you can see the uh, Slogger, he actually goes right through that platform. Is it doesn't offer any protection, and actually, when you're further here, the aim of Guybans a lot more better. He actually hits you rather than uh, falling to your side. So, it definitely becomes more difficult if you do it this way. And uh, as you can see, probably uh, something that doesn't happen very often in this boss fight. I actually died. As the game over screen says, the knight is still young and rather than stop here, I wanted to isolate both bosses to really get a handle on what kind of AI they had. So what I wanted to do here is to try and tempt uh, to try and get rid of uh, Guyburn first so I could have a look at Slogger's AI. And how I did that was to try to attract him to the left and I was a bit scared about accidentally killing Slogger right here because it's quite easy to do. So 
I wanted to kill Gaibin first, so I thought the best way is to climb up here where Stogra can't get to and attack Gaibin by himself. He's definitely a bit more vulnerable up here because you're often above him and he went down pretty easily so uh, now he's reduced to fire and bones it was time to go down and deal with Slugra. Now I don't want to attack him here what I want to see is his attack patterns you know what kind of attacks he makes and when it looks like there's a, a, a certain kind of randomized uh, aspect to his attack patterns even when he's quite close to you sometimes he'll still do the fireball attack not just when he's uh, very far away and uh, so maybe they they kind of swap one after the other but if you just duck down here you can pretty much stay here forever and he'll never ever hit you so I'm not going to show you the whole thing but uh, just to say that I stayed duck here for quite some time and he never hit me so let's cut to a bit further on and we take a further look It's actually very easy to get him into this pattern here if you just time it right and it's not too difficult to time it right. You can keep hitting him, you'll keep backing off and he'll never even touch you. So now that we see the attacks he had with his spear, what I wanted to do is hit him enough times so he lost his spear so we can have a look at what kind of stuff he does, what his AI is like when he loses his spear. Initially I thought I'd go with my little ducking trick to make sure I avoid any of these attacks but Actually, that wasn't necessary because even if you stand up, now that you've lost his spear, you won't you won't dare to come even near you. So he does his little kind of headbutt attack, but he's always too far away to get you anyway. So even if you just stand here forever, he would never come close enough. And maybe it's part of his personality as a character. He's you know, a bit more brave when he has his spear, but when you lose it, he kind of won't come close to you. The only way you can get hurt is if you actually run into him. Even if you turn your back to him, he still won't come near you. But I thought maybe if uh, in my game if you turn your back maybe you'll come closer but I had some ideas of some attacks we could give him even without his spear and I will talk about those a little bit later in the video. Okay so let's leave Slogger here I've got a lot more footage of this and trust me he doesn't attack so it's not very interesting to see so now let's move on to Gaiban. Okay, so after killing Slogra, we're left with the flying boss. Now, he has two main basic attacks, whether he's in his blue mode or red mode. He basically either lands and does a horizontal fireballs, or he's flying and he does the diagonal uh, fireballs. So there's nothing too complicated, and of course, the size of the fireballs changes too. Now for him, the ducking in one place tactic and hope he doesn't you won't work because he, he does eventually get you so you definitely have to move so it's a bit more sophisticated than the Slogger AI and another interesting thing I noticed that even when you duck, when you when his feet pass by you, that's not counted as a hitbox so they're quite generous to the player I think, they even if he hits you with his feet you don't get hurt by it so the hitbox is actually pretty small. Okay, now let's skip ahead until he gets really angry, so he goes into his red kind of angry Hulk mode. And uh, the there's not too much difference, so he looks like the big fireball should hit Alucard, Alucard's head there, but um, as with the feet, the hitbox is pretty generous to the player, so in my game I might make it so that the, the big fireball, when he fires it horizontally there, does hit you, but you have to jump over it, but then I'd have to make the fireballs less frequent, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do there, but I think it's a, a cool little effect when he gets angry like this and uh, he changes his attacks but it's basically still the same horizontal on the ground attacks and the flying diagonal attacks as before. In the original he gets red and angry when you hit him a certain amount of times but uh, for my one I was thinking about maybe letting him get really angry when Slogra dies because I think he'll be more in keeping with them being kind of I'm not sure if you can call them friends exactly, but kind of partners in crime at least. There is another enemy in the game where the guy with the owl, and if you kill the owl first then he gets really upset and so I think it's cool to have those little nice kind of touches in the game. It really gives the enemies a lot more character, a lot more personality. Okay, I think we've already seen enough of the original version, so now let's take a look at how I programmed the Mega Drive version.
Before we even get to the bosses, one change you may have already noticed is that Alucard finally has his idle animation back and as he jumps down there and as he jumps up and down uh, in a minute, you'll see that he also has his jumping animation correct now and also a little landing animation, not the landing animation when he jumps from very far, far down, but the basic landing animation. They all need work, but at least they're in for now. And also we have the two enemies. Now, as we move closer, you'll see that Alucard also has a, a knockback function now too so when he gets hit he doesn't just get hurt but he also gets knocked back as well all the previous enemies i've done have also had all had their own set routine but these ones as you can see here they're actually following alucard around so it's very basic in this early build but at least they're following around and if i hit them there they he kind of speeds up his animation and stands still they look like they're doing a little dance almost but at this stage i just wanted to check to make sure that alucard was getting hit and hurt by the enemies and that alucard was able to hurt the enemies in turn to hit them and make them stand still and do the little little shuffle not only that but alucard now also has an actual death so uh, just now he he lost all his life and what happens is i've programmed it so that the game will simply reset and set you back to the beginning so this is part of the same game it just resets i actually try to do like a, a sgdk has a fade to red function and that's what i tried to do there but um, unfortunately it doesn't turn everything red uh, the, the enemies go like a, a, a strange color and of course the way the animation works there is not fully complete either but it's just uh, it's just a start it's just a little placeholder so i'm glad to have the a little, a ability to die finally in there because then it makes it feel much more like a game when I talked about the characters reacting to Alucard's movements, you may have noticed there was a slight delay between how they reacted to the movements, whereas in this little clip here I've removed the delay, so especially if you look at the, the enemy at the very top, the flying uh, creature, he pretty much, as soon as Alucard passes him, he changes direction, so he's, he's changing instantaneously, but that's not normally a good idea, I think when you do the bosses or any enemy, you want to have like a, a routine where there's a slight delay in decision making to make it a bit more fair to pair and a bit more realistic rather than them be able to react immediately. While I was happy that the characters were reacting to Alucard's movements, all they were doing were following him around, which wouldn't be too much fun for a boss fight. So I need to put in some attacking code as well, an attacking animation. And in this here, whenever they get within a certain distance of Alucard, they'll start attacking. Otherwise, they'll kind of move towards him. Now, this was kind of okay, but there were some problems, as you can see. So I need to put the hitbox for the attack and make it so that they get a bit closer and also insert a bit of randomness into attacking so they're not just doing the same thing all the time, which would be a bit boring. In this next clip here, you can see I've uh, entered, a, I've coded a little bit of randomness into it. So when they get close to him, they, they do two different kind of attacks or rather animations because, uh, you know, look at the slog right here. He either does a spear attack or he does his, I don't know what you call it. He does his little uh, dance or his little uh, moving of his mouth and his fingers and the same for and guy been up in the top he either flaps his wings or he goes into the death animation so you can see here there is the randomness is working is uh is sometimes it goes to one kind of animation sometimes to the other so i was happy that that code was working okay i think you can tell by now that i've just been iterating it over and over again adding new features and new features so first i had the enemy so they could collide with value card and then i had them so they basically uh, they could follow him around and then th when they get within a certain distance they can do some kind of attack and then make that random but of course i had a lot more to add and so i'm going to jump ahead now to the finished article you could say and we're going to take a look so first of all if you try and get closer and closer and closer just like the playstation version you have to get within a certain distance before they start moving and for mine there we go and <laughs> you can see um a new feature i added is this long range attack for slug right now at the moment he kind of ducks down but then he switches into his kind of drop from the air attack and uh, <laughs> So, uh, but obviously I'm going to change that to his ducking attack eventually, but I'll just use it for there now. And you can see that Guyben's actually got his fireballs. So um, one thing I was quite pleased of in the PlayStation version, the fireballs go straight to the floor, which seems a bit unrealistic to me. So I was happy that I got it so they explode when they hit the floor or Alucard. They don't just pass through the floor. It makes the floor seem much more solid. Now, as well as the fireballs, which of course can hurt Alucard, we have, of course, the randomness when you get close to Stogger, he just 
either the funny like mouth moving animation or he does his spear thrust i want to show you the spear thrust in a minute so there you go you see there where he actually spear thrust and the unlike last time the hitbox changes because obviously the hitbox needs to get bigger to take into account his spear and when he comes to you know hitting him he kind of does his head shake thing I, I don't know if i'll keep that i might just use the uh, original playstation one where he just hits his head to one side is there's not much of an animation but um he kind of looks like he's more hurt here i suppose and uh, so i'm not sure what i'm going to do with that and of course i've just got when you hit gaiban he goes into his death animation and of course that's going to change everything here is just a uh, you know it's a work in progress and uh, it's gonna be a lot more polished you can even see it right now there's a fireball that's not going away and um, so there's definitely a little bug in the the um fireball code here because uh, the rest of fire when they hit Alicante they disappear for, for some reason that particular fireball is just staying on the screen forever despite it's a uh, early and unfinished day i'm going to include a rom so everyone can play about with it um you can't kill the enemies right now you just hit them forever that's pretty easy to change i could make it so they die within 10 hits but uh, at the moment they pretty much just survive forever it's only Alucard who can die at the moment but uh, you can have a play about the ROM anyway just tell me if you see any more bugs and no doubt there will be many many more uh, but you can uh, you can play the ROM you can listen to um, Aliana's amazing rendition of Festival of Servants it's really great sounds especially good on the original Mega Drive on original hardware and of course you can also admire Pyron's amazing graphics as well <laughs> there's another bug just there where he kind of actually goes through the wall so <laughs> obviously I still have a lot to do here but I've learned a lot about just um just how to to program AI so that'll be useful not just for future boss fights but also for regular enemies because some enemies have their own set pattern but other enemies really do react to what Alucard is doing so that's a, a vital piece that I think I've, I kind of know how to do now I feel quite confident that I can create AI routines for new enemies and new uh, bosses without too much difficulty. Okay, so I think that just about wraps things up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then please subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you want to support the channel further, I have a Patreon account. You won't go unrewarded. And until next time. Farewell.